Hello and welcome back to the Nandrochi channel. Today I have another unboxing for you. However, it's slightly different from what I was originally planning on doing. About an hour ago, I got another package in the mail and I've decided I'm going to unbox that one instead of the original Nandroid unboxing that I had been planning since filming my last video. Don't worry, that'll still be coming up soon, just not this time. So I've already opened the box. We get the October packing slip, which I've stupidly sliced down the middle. It's fine, I have other ones and I'll be getting more coming in as well. So here's the art for the October Ami Ami packing slip. It's honestly probably my favourite one in a while. I'm probably biased because I love October. It's probably my favourite month and it has Halloween in it, so I'm probably not alone in thinking that. I was slightly concerned when I originally got this because when I was walking with it, literally just from the front door to my bed, it sounded like a nendroid. It sounded like there was moving parts inside. There shouldn't be. I don't know how it's packaged, but it shouldn't sound like that. I'm worried it might be broken. And yeah, this doesn't fill me with confidence. It's clearly too big for the box. Ami Ami haven't been able to use quite as much packing paper as they probably would have wanted to. We have bubble wrap, which I've never had before from them. This box is huge. Oh, it's actually, it's not as big as I thought it was. It's flat, but it's still pretty big. Here we have Sega's prize figure of Johanne from Love Live. It's Sega, isn't it? Super premium. Sega, yes, of course. There you go. So the box is quite big. If we do a head comparison like I did in my last unboxing video. Fairly, fairly sizable. It's thin, but it's like wide. And I don't know if you can hear this, but like, does that sound like it's broken to you? There's a little bit of damage on like the top here, but I mean, it's a prize figure box, so I really don't mind at all. I figured this one was probably actually won rather than like ordered at any point because it does have a little dent in the bottom where it's probably fallen inside the machine. As it is a prize figure, so I don't particularly care. So instead of cutting away to another location, I'm probably just gonna stay here to unbox it because I can't imagine there's gonna be too many parts. It should be fairly straightforward. I won't need to mess around with different faceplates or poses or anything like my previous unboxings of Nendroids. So I'll just open it, I guess. I have no idea what kind of size she is. I'm assuming pretty big given the size of this box, but let's just open her up. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> There's only one flap coming out, the other one's stuck behind. Okay, no, maybe it isn't broken. Oh my God. She smells exactly, this is gonna sound really weird. She smells exactly like the first prize figure I ever got, which is one that I actually won in Akihabara. That was possibly also a Sega one, actually. Here she is in her blister. Gives pretty much everything away, to be honest here. So first off, let's take a little look at her stand. On first glance, it's actually pretty nice. So we've got her name printed down at the front with some very, very typical Johanne motifs on it, which I really, really like. We've got the Love Life branding there. And it's like this kind of almost opaque matte finish to the plastic. I think that looks really cool. For a prize figure, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Here we have the tiny little halo that she comes with. It's black and looks like it's kind of going off a fluffy texture. I don't love that this band that attaches it to the head is in white. I feel like if it was in black, it would look a lot less obvious. I guess the actual halo itself probably wouldn't stand out so much if that was the case. Straight off the bat, the quality of this is so, so good. Her eyes. It's like really, really true to character. She looks fantastic. I'm surprised. I really didn't think she looked this good. The blue of her hair is lovely. In some pictures that I'd seen, it looked like it almost blended in with the black slightly, but in, in this light here, it really stands out. Her fingernails are painted as well. Granted, not particularly well, but that kind of detail in a prize figure is to be commended, really. So everything is in this like matte finish, apart from her boots, which are a little glossier, which reminds me of <laughs> Shiro and Android in my last unboxing. You can't really see it so much from the back. When it hits the light there, you can really see how glossy it is. And the pink on the boots really stands out from the black as well. I'm really impressed by this. I don't think there's been any shadowing put on the skirt, but I could be wrong. It's not particularly obvious, but it's textured anyway, so like you can see shadows in it. I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed with this. And the size as well is lovely. I think it will go quite well with my Asuna EXQ price figure. So I'll see if I can attach her halo on to her head and then onto her base as well, see how easy that is. This halo feels like it's gonna break. I'm scared. I think there was instructions on the box. 
I don't want to just start like ramming it in the wrong way. Okay, so unless you want to just jump in and start messing around with something so delicate. The instructions on the box. So if you see here, there's a diagram that shows that the the white piece that connects the halo to the head isn't exactly down the middle. It's slightly towards the, the front end. This part faces the front this part faces the back, so that kind of dictates which way around you put it in. If you look really, really closely, it is, it is quite obvious, but honestly, I don't have the patience to look at it that closely, so I'm glad that this instruction was included. So here she is with her halo in. It doesn't actually look quite as bad as I thought it was going to. The white of the collar kind of offsets how white the, the connector part is. I actually, yeah, I, I like it a bit more than I thought I was going to. So I didn't bother filming me putting her into the base because it was actually very easy. Her legs are fairly thick. It didn't feel too delicate. It didn't feel like the peg was too large or anything like that. It went in pretty easily and I didn't feel like I was going to break it. Can't say the same for some of my other figures, which I've had heart attacks trying to put pegs into holes, etc. But this one was really, really quite simple. One thing I would like to quickly pick up on as a slight defect of this figure, there's a fairly obvious seam line running down the front part of the leg. There's another one on the left leg as well, but it's, it's slightly further behind the figure. I don't know if that's picking that up at all. You can kind of see a slight, slight line coming down the leg here. There's a little bit of a seam line there, which given its position on the figure, is literally down the front here. And like, that is the front of the figure. So I'm not blown away by that aspect. The other seam line on the right leg is slightly further behind, so it's not quite as obvious. I would have hoped that they'd maybe have put that somewhere that was slightly less noticeable, but it doesn't really detract too much from the overall figure. It's just if I had to pick up on one thing, it would probably be that. Other than that, I mean, textures overall are really good. There's a couple of kind of over-textured bumpy bits like around this part of the skirt, but it's not that noticeable. Like, it probably wouldn't even pick up on camera properly, so I don't see it as being too much of a flaw. As I said, overall, I just think this this line down the leg is a little irritating and something that's avoidable, because I'm imagining all of the figures are going to have that. That's how it would have been set in the mould, but I, I'm not entirely sure why they did that. I mean, I'm not too mad about it, because overall she looks really good, and her outfit, though simple, is nice. It's not too textured. The difference between the fuchsia and the black really stands out, which is lovely. And the purpley elements really go with her eyes. So I think overall the colors in this figure are really, really good. And as I said, I don't think the white of this skirt is actually shaded at all. Just the texture of it makes it look really quite dynamic, which I like. So that's just a really brief look at this Sega Johanna Love Life prize figure. I'll definitely be taking more pictures for more of an in-depth look on Instagram and I'll maybe highlight some of the defects so that it's easier for you to see. I don't know how well it'll pick up, especially with how bright it is outside. Like, it probably wouldn't pick up too well in terms of contrast and such. So I will highlight those in some pictures going up on my Instagram, at Nindorochi, fairly soon. Probably closer to Halloween, but this video probably won't be uploaded until closer to Halloween anyway. So that being the case, look out for it fairly soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was something a little bit different, not another Nendroid. But the next video will be an Android. Next video will be... Yudachi from Kantai Collection Nendroid Kai Ni, which is I think the only Yudachi Nendroid that exists. It's my favourite design anyway, so of course I'd get that one and I will be going into that in detail next time. Might be a bit of a lengthier video because of the sheer number of parts that she comes with, but hopefully it won't be too boring and I will see you fairly soon. Let me know either in the comments or over on Instagram if you're interested in getting the Yoshiko price figure as well. We can maybe compare some of the defects that I've got on mine to any that you would have on yours, just to see if there are actually consistencies, which I imagine there probably will be. Prize figures are never going to be perfect, but this one is fairly close. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you with an Android unboxing next time. Bye!